Welcome back to our series where we're explaining all the economic data releases that you see in the monthly cycle and how they relate to each other so that you're better able to deal with them in the markets. This time we're going to take a look at another release for the manufacturing sector, which is factory orders. And once again, we'll be taking a look at the US release, but the same principles largely apply for other economies as well. And I would recommend watching our video on durable goods orders first, as that's also part of this release, and you'll see that video linked up here. So factory orders measures the total value of orders from domestic factories, those located within the US, and the release comes about a week after the durable goods orders data, and because of that, it doesn't really have the same impact in the markets. That's because durable goods are the juiciest part of the release, and that data usually would have already been priced in before factory orders are released. However, it's still important for fundamental analysis and for understanding the economy. So the release contains the revisions for durable goods and also includes non-durables for a more complete picture of manufacturing activity in the US. Now, non-durable goods are those that have a shorter shelf life or are expected to be consumed within three years. So things like food, clothing, fuel. Since a lot of these items need to be purchased regardless of what state the economy is in, it means the non-durables data isn't as useful as durable goods as an indicator of the overall state of the economy. So with that in mind, since purchases of non-durable goods tend to remain fairly consistent, the headline figure for factory orders can often be predicted based on the durable goods release from the week before. So durable goods makes up about 45% of the release. Now, just like we discussed in the video about durable goods orders, it's common to exclude transportation and defense from the factory orders data, since they tend to distort the numbers when big orders are suddenly placed. And keep in mind, the headline figure isn't adjusted for inflation, so that means increasing factory orders could also come as a result of higher prices as opposed to actual more orders. So if you're analyzing the numbers, you may want to take inflation into account. The report can be broken down into a range of categories based on different sectors, and it also includes unfilled orders, which can be used as an indicator of whether the economy is maybe starting to overheat. So typically, if the economy is growing, the unfilled orders should remain relatively low as there's enough production capacity for the demand. But if unfilled orders increases at a high rate, that could be a sign that the economy is starting to overheat and this imbalance between demand and supply is likely to cause inflationary pressures. And on the other hand, if we have falling unfilled orders, that could indicate a slowing economy as businesses and consumers are spending less, which is leading to lower factory output. So as a result of this, the Federal Reserve will be watching for any imbalances in supply and demand. And since this report also includes things like food and fuel purchase data, it can be useful for commodity traders as well. Just like with the other manufacturing data that we've covered in this series, an increase is usually a positive sign for the economy because if manufacturing activity is increasing, it's going to create more jobs and have other positive knock-on effects. However, as I mentioned before, factory orders have already been overshadowed by the durable goods orders data that comes out before, so it's more the details that matter for this report rather than the impact that it's going to have on the market. Now, if you want to know about the rest of the economic data releases, including the other manufacturing data, check out the playlist that's on screen and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next episodes. Thanks for watching.